If you went on to Google right now and searched up what is the hardest IGCSE subject, the answer that you'll most probably get is IGCSE additional mathematics. The question is, is this subject really as hard as people make it out to be? When is it worth it for you to consider taking IGCSE additional mathematics? Or when should you just stick to normal IGCSE mathematics? Even within normal IGCSE mathematics, what does extended mean and what does core mean? Don't worry, I know that these questions can seem incredibly daunting when you're new to your IGCSEs, but I'm here to answer all of them. Hey there, I'm Aryan. I'm a world topper in both IGCSE mathematics and IGCSE additional mathematics, meaning that I got a perfect score of 100 on both of the exams. And today, I'm here to talk about whether or not you should take additional mathematics, take both additional mathematics and IGCSE mathematics, or take just IGCSE mathematics. I'm going to go through everything in this video, from the syllabus content for each of these subjects, to the way in which they might impact your A-level journey going forward, and much more. Let's get into it. First up, let's talk about normal IGCSE mathematics. When you hear someone say that they're doing extended maths or core maths, this is what they mean. IGCSE mathematics is a subject that's compulsory to take or at least very highly recommended in most schools. So it's a subject that you'll end up taking anyways, regardless of what you plan to do at university or in your A-levels going further. The extended syllabus covers topics like algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and some basic statistics as well, going up to a level that's a little higher than a lot of other national curricula. The key thing to understand here is that IGCSE mathematics is meant to equip you with the foundational skills required to perform mathematics-related activities in real, everyday life, and to also open up avenues for further studies in fields like science, economics, engineering, and even business. All right, now that we've got all that introductory stuff out of the way, let's get into the main question regarding IGCSE mathematics. What's the difference between core and extended? Core is a subset of the main IGCSE mathematics syllabus that's been designed for students who find mathematics a little more challenging and who would rather focus on building up a strong foundation over tackling some of the more challenging problems that might show up on an ordinary IGCSE mathematics paper. Keep in mind, the highest grade you can get on core is a C, meaning that even if you score full marks on all of your core mathematics papers, your grade on IGCSE mathematics overall will still be a C. This means that it's only ever worth considering core if you feel like you're going to score below a C on extended maths anyways, in which case it's worth going into core because you'll be able to focus a lot more on these easier concepts and build up a much stronger base within the subject. The extended curriculum, on the other hand, goes a little bit more into depth in every different topic and allows you to go all the way up to an A star. So, if you're aiming to get grades that are on the higher end of the spectrum and you're looking to take subjects like physics, chemistry, economics, and more at your A-levels, it's definitely worth pursuing extended over core. Before we move on to the next thing, I promised that I would give you a full overview of everything that's in the subject. So let's talk a little bit about the exam structure of normal IGCSE mathematics. There are four papers offered, and you'll end up doing two of these depending on whether you're doing core or extended. Students doing core end up giving paper one and paper three, while extended students give paper two and paper four. Students doing extended be prepared for more challenging questions that will truly test your in-depth understanding of the topics that are in math, especially on paper four. All right, now that we've got code and extended out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the main point of this video, which is IGCSE additional mathematics. This is usually an optional subject at most schools, well, at all schools, and that's assuming that it's even offered at your school, which it isn't at a lot of them. Additional maths, or ad maths as we tend to call it, is a step up from IGCSE mathematics in almost every single way when it comes to the subject content. It delves into a lot of more advanced or complicated concepts, the kind of things that you would more expect from an A-level curriculum than an IGCSE one. So that means concepts like calculus, advanced trigonometry, logarithms, vectors, and a lot more. Try to think of ADMATS as a bridge between IGCSE maths and A-level maths. 
right? It ends up covering a lot of topics that show up on things like AS Pure 1 Mathematics or Pure 2 Mathematics when you're doing your A-levels. So it covers a lot of the A-level Pure Syllabus content as well. It's been designed with students in mind who really want to challenge their mathematical abilities and take them to the next step. Once again, when you take additional mathematics, you end up giving two papers. Unlike IGCSE mathematics, where these two are weighted differently, for additional mathematics, each of them is worth 50% of your final grade, and they don't really have a lot of differences in the paper structure between them, just with different concepts being tested across them. Also, here with additional maths, the focus of the papers is more on abstract problem solving, so you don't get a lot of those long, wordy, real-world problems. Instead, they're quite straight and to the point. They might ask you to integrate a function, they might ask you to differentiate something, they might ask you to calculate the value of something, and so on. Don't take this to mean that the subject is easier. All I'm trying to say is that the papers are more abstract and less grounded in reality, meaning that the questions can be a little bit more straightforward with what they're asking you to do. So, now that I've talked through what IGCSE Mathematics and IGCSE Additional Mathematics really mean, let's go through some common scenarios and which subjects you should take in these scenarios, right? Let's figure out whether or not you should take IGCSE Additional Mathematics. Scenario number one, and this is one of the most common and easy ones to deal with, is that you find mathematics challenging. Look, this is completely natural, right? Not every subject is going to be within your comfort zone. If, and if you think that you're having trouble with, say, normal IGCSE mathematics at the extended level, then it may not be worth considering additional mathematics since it might end up stretching you too thin. In this case, I'd say just take normal IGCSE maths, take it at either code or extended, depending on what your goals are and what your level is, and stick with that. Don't try to push yourself too hard for additional mathematics. Scenario two, you're aiming to take STEM related subjects either at A-levels or at university. So things like mathematics, physics, or further maths. To figure out what A-levels you might be considering or might be looking into at university, check out my A-level subject selection guide. I've put it in the description down below and it has a lot of in-depth advice for what kind of A-levels you should consider depending on what your interests are, what major you want to go into and more. Anyways, getting back to the topic, if you're thinking of taking these STEM related A-levels or STEM related courses at university, taking additional maths will make your life a lot easier. First of all, a lot of STEM related majors like say uh, computer science or electrical engineering, universities prefer if you've taken A-level further maths. Now, if you've done just IGCSE maths, taking A-level further maths is a very big challenge since A-level further maths assumes that you already know the entire normal A-level maths content and doing the entire A-level maths content and then the A-level further maths content from scratch is practically impossible in two years. If you've taken additional maths, you'll have already done a large portion of A-level maths before you even start your A-levels, making the journey to A-level further maths a lot easier. So if you're planning on going into the kind of major, the kind of program which requires you to do A-level further maths, definitely, definitely, definitely consider additional mathematics. Even if you're not, and you're thinking of going into things like physics or chemistry or any other kind of engineering which doesn't require you to do further maths, but you think you're good at math and think you have a genuine interest in STEM, go for taking additional maths. The main reason for this is that it'll make A-level math easier. Say you end up going into A-levels and you end up taking A-levels math, physics, and chemistry, right? If you've done IGCSE additional maths, it'll make your A-level math journey a lot easier since you've already studied a lot of the content beforehand. It'll leave you with more time to focus on the more crucial A-levels for your career, like physics or chemistry in the example that I just said. In this case, in these cases, I would most definitely recommend taking IGCSE additional mathematics. Scenario number three, you're not sure what A-levels you want to do, you're not sure what university course you want to do, and you in general don't have the clearest plan for what you're going to do going forward. Don't worry, this is a completely natural place to be in. If you're watching this video, you're likely just entering your IGCSE, so just entering grade nine or year 10. You don't need to have your entire future planned out just yet. However, the question does arise, should you take additional mathematics? In this case, it comes down to, well, do you have a genuine passion for mathematics or not? Is this a subject that you enjoy? If it is, go for it. 
take additional mathematics. If you enjoy mathematics right now, you will probably, most probably, still enjoy it two years from now. You will probably want to take, say, A-level mathematics. And if you really like maths, you might really want to take A-level further mathematics. And taking ad maths can open up the doors required to make these choices sort of more accessible. Even if you don't end up taking maths at A-levels, taking ad maths will still help develop your critical thinking skills, will still help you develop a lot of important skills within the field of mathematics that will be helpful even for other subjects like, say, economics or accounts, right? So once again, it comes down to personal preference. Before I end off this video, I'd like to take a moment to address a question that comes up a lot whenever I'm talking to people, which is, does taking IGCSE ad maths end up helping you with your university admissions journey. Look, as someone that's not an admissions officer, I can't really tell you the specifics of whether or not taking ad maths will help you get admission into whatever top university you're aiming for. However, what I can tell you is that generally speaking, universities tend to favor students who have taken more rigorous course loads, since it's a good way of knowing that the student has both the passion to study and also the sort of intellect required to pull off that rigorous course load. If you think that you can take ad maths, taking it will definitely show that, yes, it will definitely show these sort of qualities that I mentioned earlier, and I would 100% recommend it. Long story short, yes, it will help with university admissions. It will show admissions officers that you're capable of taking more difficult subjects and excelling at them. All right, quickly, let's summarize everything that I've said. If mathematics isn't your strength, stick to just IGCSE, core mathematics, or extended mathematics, depending on your level. If you want to go into STEM-related subjects at university, I would most definitely recommend taking ad maths. If you really like ad maths, or you just like maths, well, in general, Definitely go for taking the subject. And if you're unclear as to what you want to do going forward, remember, ad maths is a great way of keeping your options open across all kinds of fields. Ultimately, remember, the decision is yours and it comes down to your own strengths and what you think you'll be able to manage. However, no matter what you do, I'm sure you'll do great. All right. Anyways, that's all I have to say for today's video. If you found any of the advice that I gave you in this video helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an upload. And hey, if you have any questions, want me to help you out with this decision, or just anything else that you want to share, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer as many of y'all's questions as possible. Anyways, as usual, that's all and thank you very much for watching.